Hello out there in the realms of the living. Welcome to Thrones of Game, the only podcast that watches Game of Thrones backwards. If you've never listened to the show before, I am your host, BT Calloway. I've already seen the entire series, but joining me is Elliot Joe O'Neill, and he is the only man in the world to watch Game of Thrones for the first time in reverse order. Elliot, how you doing, buddy? Well, We I'm don't quite- have time, man! Dusting off an oldie there. But come on, we just saw Season 6, Episode 10, the Season 6 finale, and our Season 3 opener. This was the Winds of Winter. So many things happened, but why don't you tell us about some of those things? What just happened? I, I got introduced to a lot of characters <laughs> because, as you said at the top of the show, this is the first time uh, I'm watching Game of Thrones for the first time, but in reverse order. Mm-hmm. And the episode starts out with a fucking entire normal show's worth of cast of characters that I'm meeting for the first time and when this happens in this show (laughs) I can usually expect they're about to die and die they did Uh, they died in a big green blaze of glory (laughs) oh my 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 yes so for everyone else out there this is the episode where the sept is blown up and uh, a whole bunch of named characters die like the high sparrow marjorie tyrell all the clergy of sparrows the you know tyrell boy a uh, loris apparently who cares <laughs> uh some lannister kid i don't know they all blow up mm. <laughs> in spectacular fashion yeah when uh, the dude was like looking for the secret of the ooze yeah yeah <laughs> I, I didn't get this scene as well. He's just like crawling towards a candle and ominous green glowing shit. Yeah, he doesn't know what this is, but uh, we do, or I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is wildfire, which explodes in a gout of green flame. That's mm. a little something for my uh, Acquisition Incorporated fans out there. Green flame. The, the, <laughs> Wink. <laughs> they'll get it. <laughs> yeah, so a lot, a lot happens in this one, and... I'm feeling like a few more pieces are starting of the big puzzle are starting to be filled in for me, mm-hmm. but ultimately I felt like, aside from a couple of key moments, I felt like this was a bit of a wheel spinner. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess a lot of connecting things happen here. Uh, just to quickly touch on so everyone catches up on what episode we're talking about, Sep blows up, uh, Thomas Tommen doesn't stick the landing out the window, uh, <laughs> Walder Frey has a feast, Walder Frey gets shanked, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, yeah, those are our main points on this one. I oh, am yeah, Dan Brady sales for the we- for Westeros. Yeah, and just on the who who was the the jumpy kid, Tommen. Tommen. Yeah, that was exactly the same way that the original boss in the IT crowd went out. <laughs> it was like maybe shot from a different angle, but it was the exact cadence, the exact lack of splat sound effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if this was a tribute to the IT crowd. I mean, we can only assume. <laughs> You know, Lannister's big IT crowd fans. <laughs> crowd of IT. <laughs> or crowd of it. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there is big arguments about that. Mm. But anyway. Again, it's a joke that has to be written down to be understood. There's a few of those. Yeah. Anyway, back to Got. Yeah, back to Got. Or Tog, in our case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. So, what was your MVP out of this episode? Or, transversely, uh, what was your LVP? Your either most valuable part or least valuable part? Um, I, well, in the, it was a bit of a wheel spinner aside from a couple of key moments. I'm sticking by that because like, I don't know, there weren't any huge eventy things besides that opening big green explosion. Mm. And you know, when you kind of open with that, you don't leave yourself much places to go. It's true. You got all the jaws are on the floor. Yeah. You know, they can't get any lower. And sort of reinforcing what we were saying from the last episode, the season seven finale, our season two finale, um, uh, the cold open sort of felt weird, and I felt like this episode kind of makes that lose even more impact. Mm. Yeah, because again, it the cold open where a uh, creepy old dude, the guys whose sons oh, yeah. are off ch- yeah, yeah, shaving yeah. their cunt hairs. Okay, and I got it. So the cold open from last episode, uh, the season seven opener, where Walder Frey is just sitting about and giving everyone a uh, a, a feast, and then you it's before the, it's before the opening credit sequence and a pulls too much focus on it you know this is important yeah and yeah i agree whereas this i i remember figuring out what was going on because once you saw the barrels of green things we've seen those before uh if you're watching chronologically but uh like a loser yeah (laughs) some kind of sucker uh just not to derail you but yes you are right that was their season seven premiere our finale Uh, (laughs) even what is time yeah (laughs) it's an illusion is what it is yeah, those chronological losers may actually have a point. <laughs> <laughs> no, but even then, I think, seeing as none of the characters are meant to know what's about to happen, except for Cersei, of course, just standing at a window ready to moo-ha-ha. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, considering that the, for the rest of the show, she just mostly muhahas, doesn't really do anything. This is a good example of her evil intent. Yeah, because uh, like I've said, across the two seasons that I've seen, I didn't see a lot of examples of that. Mm. And so it was nice to see now where everybody else is coming from. But again, I think this is going to be the common thing with this show is the more I see, the more disappointed I am in the things I've already watched. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are now into season six, also known as the good seasons. So, uh, you know, in theory, it will only get better. Yeah, yeah. But uh, look, aside from that, uh, big valuable moments, uh, most valuable moments, uh, I got to say, not really. I was a little bored with this one. That's right. I'll throw in two then. Freaking Cecil Lannister when she's uh, torturing the nun and is all like, I do things because it feels good. I drink wine because it feels good. I fuck my brother because it feels good. And then yeah. he's like, and I'm going to torture and murder you because it feels good. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's intense. Lena Headley, once again, killing it. It feels good when Feel I fuck good. my brother now. <laughs> so I would have gone with uh, gorillas, but you know. <laughs> bum, ba-da-da, bum, bum. Feels, feels good. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lannister, full feels of good. calm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I just wasn't reading. The, I wasn't expecting the word calm. I'm sorry. <laughs> and neither was anyone else out there. Very sorry as well. I wasn't expecting her to <laughs> say fuck her brother, but you know what? Wow, that was spooky. <laughs> it's it's me, dear God, from back in time. <laughs> Do I guess you your, pod- it? <laughs> your podcast just plays if you leave it for too long. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got Hey Siri turned off. That was really spooky and weird. <laughs> mm. Siri wanted to be part of the conversation, but we say no. <laughs> she starts doing like a bumblebee like, in Transformers and this like is, this is fantasy Siri you're the future god <laughs> freaking pain in the ass oh maybe because I said Cersei hey Cersei <laughs> no it doesn't work okay yeah well you want to play replace Siri with Cersei because that's getting creepy <laughs> yeah Bruno, how can I help you today I fuck my brother because it feels good <laughs> I get that <laughs> the weird world anyway uh, yeah so uh, I agree, yes. Yeah, she did well in that scene, and I wrote down she was uh, wineboarding or water bordeauxing. Ah, I, w- I wrote down wineboarding as well. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wineboarding. Yeah. Yeah. I still like water bordeauxing, even though the water <laughs> part doesn't make sense. Anyway. Who cares? It works. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fucking admission to spell. Yep. I'm also going to go with uh, the, my other MVP is the Sir Davos chewing out the red woman for uh, in in... Winterfell for uh, burning, I can't remember her name at the stake. Mm. Yeah, this was a, he, this, whoever plays Sir Davos, just fucking well done. Yeah. <laughs> that guy I, rocks. I usually, yeah, see him as a pretty, like, uh, detached, quippy motherfucker. Yeah. But yeah, we're actually watching him show some emotion and some acting. Fucking hell, this is amazing. Yeah, dude kills it. I, n- I did not appreciate Sir Davos on the forward watch. I'm really enjoying him on the backwards watch. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, chewing out Millhouse as well. <laughs> um, she deserved it. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I yeah invented this little uh, sketch in my head at the at that moment where you know he she goes, I burned her at the stake, and I really want to uh, jump on Snowy that and go. Oh, you burnt her steak. That's okay. <laughs> when my family would have a feast and I'd sit over there. No, 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 no at, at the, the steak. <laughs> you know, S T E A. Oh, that's much different. Yeah. Um, but in this also least valuable player, the fucking scars in this show. Okay, I've never noticed Kit Harrington's scar over his right eye before. Was that yeah. just me? Um, I think it kind of pops up. Again, it, it feels like, and I don't know whether to blame the lighting, because it's obviously very differently lit in um, Winterfell than other parts of, of the world. But it, It's a bit grayer in the other seasons. Yeah, so when... maybe, it, maybe that makes it easier to notice. I just I find it hard to believe that on a show this particular about detail that they would overlook makeup effects like that and just forget to put them on or forget how they made them but yeah it was definitely much more prominent here well i was wondering in this episode is this the one where Tyrion gets the scar because it's fucking barely there Mm. and i've said before in previous episodes that it was redder than it should be and because i'm watching the show backwards it shouldn't have been red anyway yeah no you're right and again i didn't notice that watching week to week you don't pick up on these things as much as well kind of almost week to week now yeah yeah shut up ben (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, yeah, little bits off, but no, you're right. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, and again, when you know, there's other parts of this episode that do look, you know, uh, beautiful, and it's easy things to fuck up, like that green explosion, like horrifying, beautiful, mm-hmm. the way that the walls came crumbling in, and, and the... people just get incinerated into skeletons, very kind of napalm death. Oh, fucking a, and then the building crumbling in on itself, mm-hmm. like. 
I thought that moment when little kid jumped, like before that, it was just going to be a moment just to sort of let that settle in a bit. And yeah. then they like, no, throwing at least one more death into the mix. Well, that's the thing. The kind of plumage of smoke lasts the entire episode and you get the sense it might be there for like days. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, you know, an effective tragedy. Yeah. And yeah, speaking of effects, you know, I, I groaned at the fucking final scene of uh, the boats because it just felt like we had so much episode at this point. But, you know, it looks nice. It is also an episode that, yeah, that feels like it ends four times. It's like, and yeah. that's a good final shot. And no, we got more. Yeah. And that feels like a good final shot. And we got more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone wanted to have the last word, but not the dragon. He got to have the last word. Well, dragons tend to get the last word. They don't like being, you know, interrupted. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Nudity. A little yeah. bit. Yay! <laughs> we got a bit of side boob. It was naked side boob. There mm-hmm. was some nip there. And <laughs> we got some butt. Yeah, from from just uh, the Naster's ho, who's all like, get your pay me. And he's like, I'll pay you later. So, get the money up front, woman. God. <laughs> like rule one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think either of them survive, though, do they? Uh, no. He gets shanked by a bunch of little kids with knives. And actually, she's probably fine. Oh, yeah. Once again, the whores live another day. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, that was a pretty intense scene when, uh, I don't know, the guy, the evil maester, the Darth maester, as I've taken to calling him, <laughs> he's all in black and just insidious. That's uh, good. I didn't have a good nickname for him. He was just Cersei's wingman for me. Cause... Yeah, I know. It's still funny he's always Cersei's wingman, but he's losing that over time. It doesn't do enough wingmanning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing more sinister Darthing in this stage of the show. Yeah, for sure. So he's like, I'm real sorry, Grand Maester, but you're going to have to die, and I'm going to have all these little kids murder you for some reason. Instead of doing it myself, just a dick like that. Bye. Yeah. Oh, man. What a threat. Like, creepy as fuck to have all those little mm-hmm. children come at you with knives and just get all stabby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never trust a child. You don't know what they're thinking in their tiny, tiny hearts. <laughs> and never give them tiny, tiny knives. Tiny hearts and tiny knives. And you ever had a baby grip your arm with a little razor blade nails? Oh, my God. There's pure evil in the hearts of children. <laughs> <laughs> or something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because this is the only time in the show that I felt like we've really seen like a lot of children at any time. Mm, yeah, true. They're usually like somewhat victims, or I suppose right before the long night we had that one girl who's like, I want to fight too. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, they don't come up too often, I suppose. But uh, yeah. Oh, but speaking of which, Bear Island Girl, which I think her yep. name is Lady Warmont? Uh, Mormont. Mormont. Yes. Ah. She's Callus Bod's cousin. Oh, right, right. Uh, Hound, yup. No, 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 no. That's Callus Face. Callus oh. Bod is yeah. Jorah Mamon slash uh, Captain Friendzone. The Fire Liker? Uh, Does he do the Fire Blade? No, that's Captain Eyepatch. No, the Fire Blade is either Captain Eyepatch or the Red Woman. <laughs> you know, Callus Bod, he's in the Citadel. He gets his uh, calluses cut off by Sam. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Jorah Mamon. That's her cousin. Oh, you remind me. Okay, maybe there was more MVPs in this episode, but... Um, yeah, Lady Mormont. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, where she yeah inspires everybody to bend the knee and uh, make uh, Tony Stark the Queen of the no- King of the North. <laughs> fuck. Um, and then they just when everyone's like rousing with their swords in the air, and she's just got this face like, yeah, I did this. Yeah, no, I love everyone. All just does what she says because she's yeah. got a great rousing speech of like, you refused the call, and when that this happened, you refused it as well. Blah 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 blah. That's <laughs> like, and then just gets to the end, and everyone just does it. And yeah, this bro- brought me to the meme of this episode which was uh, when they, when she first appeared, I think, beginning of this season, there was just a meme going around going, you know, if she'd been in season one, this would have been over by season two. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> everyone just does what she says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she totally inspires the oh, captain, my captain moment in this episode. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and so going back to... Um, okay, yeah, I did have a lot of MVPs. Uh-huh. Uh, Sam Wise and uh, in tow, his fam wise. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Wise and the fam wise. Yep. Uh, I love it. He shows up at the Citadel and the guy at the reception just treats him like a total bitch. Yeah. It's hilarious. He like goes to hand him the, the message and he just stands with his hand out and doesn't reach for it and Sam has to get closer and hand it over. It's a it's different like, show within this show. It really is. But also, the world treats him differently. This like the biggest <laughs> little... Just, oh, fuck you. No matter no matter who he is or where he, what he's doing, everyone is just like, fuck you, Sam. Just... Oh. Yeah, no, I suppose I'll show you around. Hey, don't let your wife and kid in here. Uh, what? No. Barely want uh, to let you in here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Douche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that reception guy is one of the a very minor role that is pretty 
pretty good. He does well for being a total dick. Hmm. So seeing as we, you know, we discussed previously that the maesters all have links in their chain to represent, you know, their fields of study. I like to imagine he's studied being a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> I had dickishness and snobbery as my majors. And And going, well, this is irregular. (laughs) And Sam's like, yes, but isn't life a bit irregular? (laughs) And he's like, fuck you, Sam. Even just him showing up, hello. (laughs) Hello. "Hello." I I don't remember the cadence, but it was wonderful. I'm pretty sure it was that first one. Hello. Yeah. (laughs) I've come to be (laughs) Maester. What do you know about that? <laughs> you never know. Everyone else in the entire show is just eh, eh, grime and death. And Sam's just hello, yeah. nice day, isn't it? <laughs> ah, Sam, guy from another series, you deserve better. <laughs> yeah, I really think you can recut all of Sam Wise's scenes with a timpani and some canned laughter. I'm pretty sure you could cut him into the Hobbit, and it would look fine, <laughs> except for the size difference, I guess. But mm, you know, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I think that's all my MVPs. <laughs> Huh? That's that's more than none. We may find we more. didn't even talk about Lady Olena. Lady uh, Olena, uh, the old t- uh, Tyrell matriarch. Oh, the Queen of Sass. Yes, who is back sassing it up <laughs> like a sassy queen. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. Why isn't Queen Elizabeth more like this? Because that would be dope as fuck. Yeah. I would listen to the royals then. <laughs> it would uh, make it a lot more compelling. Yeah. What I didn't understand about this scene was how was bringing Burnt Newton into the whole thing like an advantage for her? Because then I don't. I haven't really seen her at all in yeah. the rest of the show. Uh, no, this is all subtextual. So he walks in and he says, blood and fire. And blood and fire are the banner words for uh, Daenerys's house, uh, House Targaryen. Right. So basically he was saying, I'm going to be a conduit between you and the Dragon Queen to help you and her conquer Westeros. Well, that was the subtext of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I must say they did a fuck job of helping her. <laughs> Sassy Queen deserved a lot better than she got. It's true. She gets poisoned like two episodes from now. So, <sighs> yeah. But no, here she's got. She's talking to the Sand Vipers and that woman I can never remember the name of. And uh, you know the young ones are like keep trying to talk to her. And she goes, she, "Okay, what do you have to say? No, nope, shut up. What about <laughs> you? No, shut up. No, you have nothing. Even look. Let the grown woman speak. It was like, ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, beautiful. Sass. <laughs> <laughs> just the amount of sass in Dawn just <laughs> went through the roof. <laughs> Next question off the rank is violence. We've talked a little bit about the explosion of the Sept, so let's talk more about it. <laughs> uh, just before that, you get, uh, what's his name? Loris Tyrell getting the symbol of the Sept carved into his head. Oh, yeah. You they know, totally inglorious bastard to him. That's the one. Um, but that's only brief, and in all things considered, not terribly violent. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't really um, see a close-up of it. And I've got to say, again, in the scarring of this show, the other ones just kind of looked like they had red biro drawn on them. They didn't have, have that, like, uh, protrusion of a yeah. scar. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, they've had it for a bit longer, but uh, also I think it's going to be a symptom of, you know, when you're doing makeup for a large number of people, you do, like, a few of them really, really well, and then downgrade as you go because you don't have time. They just stand in the back. And, you know, in this high-definition era, we can notice that a bit more. <laughs> when I clean up the room tomorrow, I am going to move that music stand. You've, like, punched it on the last five podcasts we've I, done. I only really, like, gesture in this show for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I find it helps. <laughs> I, ho- oh. I host with my hands, I guess. <laughs> well, in the episode of the Index with uh, Swaim, uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a moment where you do it. Then, so I'll, I'll make sure to move that. <laughs> Appreciate it before you, yeah, get serious damage and then have to explain that to a maester. Yeah, punch well. the music stand, me lord. <laughs> um, do you have anything else for violence? I, I mean, we got Walder Frey eating it like a bitch. <laughs> Walder Frey, uh, grey, stringy haired dude. Um, oh right, right. his sons throat slit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did enjoy that. I kind of wish Arya let him uh, eat more of the pie first. Yeah, she kind of. It looked like she only just cut it, whereas we're assuming he's been at it for a while. Yeah, and but had the weird fortune he hadn't got to the bit with the toe in it yet. So uh, <laughs> yeah, because I think that would have been the the shot. You know, he's digging into the pie. Where are my sons? Um, num, num, this pie's good. This pie. And then yeah, he does the stick the fork in, and he's like not quite getting it in. And he pulls yeah. the toe. No, they are right here. here. So yeah, Arya was salad fingersing up it again. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> back to good old Arya salad fingers. A, a, a Stark will be the last thing you see smiling down <laughs> at you as you die. <laughs> yeah. And before I go, I will touch this rusty kettle. This rusty <laughs> the fork you've been eating your sons with. Uh, but yeah, the fr- the throat slitting was uh, really visceral and mm-hmm. violent, and the whole like 
when he was breathing out the blooded gush more. That was yep. fucking Gets brutal. Get some gargling. And again, mm. you get a lot of focus on Maisie Williams' face. I think that's really good because showing uh, just how both gleeful and dis- disconnected from this she kind of is. And I think that's very effective. Yeah, I actually felt like... Um... I was getting more of Arya doing this in season seven than she was in season eight. She was just kind of battling in season eight. One of many people's complaints about season eight is uh, Arya not doing enough. Yeah. But uh, again, I think they kind of explain a little bit about that when the hounds are like, if you stay here, if you stay here and fight, you'll be a fighting fuck way to lead life. Go home and shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my hound. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. My best impression of him is still, yarp. <laughs> <laughs> yarp. Yeah. So I think that does it for violence as well. Is mm-hmm. it you know you know again other than the entire sept coming down? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, a lot of characters die. You'll get to know them in the coming episodes. Yay! Uh, <laughs> we get some little finger, little fingering about. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, this sort of felt weird compared to like the episodes coming. I would have thought yeah. that Sansa would have been a lot more distant from him because she mm. sort of seems to have him as her counsel. Yeah, or it, Council, but even then, at, at an arm's distance, the idea he starts having sway in the next season feels a little weird now. Mm. Um, I think I had a, you know an entire season between the first time I watched it, and I didn't really realize that like, re- relationship dynamic seems to shift quite drastically. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's just... And it's also weird, he pretty much outright says what he wants. He usually yeah. never does that. He's just like, I have a vision for the future, and I ask myself, am I going to get there? And what I want is to be on the Iron Throne with you beside me. Come, give us a kiss, Sansa. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> but my little finger. Uh. <laughs> I can uh, do many things with my little, little finger. finger. Uh. <laughs> it's not just for sticking up while I'm holding tea. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's all he ever does. <laughs> Yeah, but that was kind of scene went nowhere. I was just kind of saying, yep, this guy is here. Yeah. Oh, yeah one thing I did really want to point out is uh, Uncle Benjamin does show up again. Remember back in the episode where they're all trapped on the uh, ice lake and John falls in when everyone leaves and he gets pulled out by someone? Oh. That's that guy. And I did not remember this happening at all. So this was the same dude. I'm like, oh, okay. He was established as being in this show before. He wasn't a total deus. I mean, he was a total deus ex machina, but at least he came from somewhere. Yeah, so he's not a White Walker or he's transitioning? I I didn't even remember he was in this show uh, (laughs) other than that one episode where he deus exes. So, eh, I guess he's a little bit White Walker. You know, yeah, I'm. I have a terrible feeling. The only explanation is he was going to be a White Walker, but it's too much of a badass. Yeah, so he was like, "Nah, I'm going to be like an undead cowboy." Yeah. <laughs> nah, bro. The White Walker tried to um uh, uh, uh incept. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Infect. No. Yeah, in fact. In, the White infest. Walker tried to infect me, bro, but I just flexed my massive biceps, dude. It was like, nah, bro, not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe there's more explanation in the box, but um, yeah, I don't think there's much more in the show, but we'll see. I completely forgot this was, he was even a scene, so... Uh, yeah, well, I guess that justifies him taking the horse, because I just thought he was a massive jerk in that moment. He's like, I'll just go wherever the wind takes me, and I'm going to take away this horse from the lady and the crippled kid. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, everything has a cause. <laughs> yeah. Um, everything pre- happens for a reason, and I'm sure this will be worth it. A- You'll feel better later. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to notice: whoever the actor is, he seems to be kind of basing his voice off the say off of Jon Snow's voice, and I think that's a nice touch. Yeah. I mean, I. Oh, he, that guy. Yeah. He All says right. like you know two lines, but it sounded kind of Jon Snowish in its inflection, and I like that as a bit of continuity that they have a similar see- speaking pattern. Oh. You know, maybe, maybe I'm making that up. Don't know. Then Bran touches the great Deku tree and sees a vision. Yeah. Uh, so what? Um. Uh, okay. Let me just t- have a moment at guessing. So this is Ned Stark who mm-hmm. is hovering over the uh, pregnant dying, la- uh, once pregnant, now dying lady. Yep. And the baby he's holding is a mystery to me because that's not Jon Snow. That's Jon Snow. <laughs> but I thought Ned Stark wasn't Snark, was Stark, fuck. Uh, Ned Fuck wasn't his pe- dad. You're so close. Ah, oh, man. Okay, okay. So this was his sister, uh, Liana, who everyone thought Rhaegar Targaryen kidnapped and, you know, uh, blah, 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 and died when he was trying to get her back. Instead, this is where uh, we find out through visual medium that, in fact, no, they had a, a marriage and a love affair, and this is actually the real birth of John. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, so this isn't Ned's kid. That's what nope. she's whispering. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how well it's going to get explained in retrospect now. Uh, basically, everyone thought John was Ned's bastard son from the whore he banged when he was off on this war trying to save his sister. Uh, in actuality, it's his nephew. Uh, but because his sister had an affair with Rhaegar Targaryen, that means John was a Targaryen and that means he would have been killed so he pretended it was his bastard... Ned pretended it was his bastard son. Oh, so that's not Ned's uh, wife? No. Oh, okay. You'll meet her in like three seasons. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this was his sister, Liana. Okay, there we go. Yes. Okay, that's okay. And the book reading bros figured this out uh, long before this happened. So they had the whole uh, R plus L equals J, and this was the big confirmation for that. So. Oh, right, right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. The puzzle pieces are coming together. Yeah. I don't don't normally explain things so bluntly, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't get explained anymore. Like, this was the bit that explained it. Yeah. Uh, no, so. I think that should be the blanket rule. Yeah, yeah. If I should have f- figured it out by now. Well, the- you would have figured out in retrospect, in future spec. In future spec, <laughs> you would have figured it out. This is from- a very good podcast. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the only one of its kind for a reason. <laughs> I'm I'm really hoping someone wants to do bad breaking with me though. <laughs> you know what? Bad breaking. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've both seen it though, so Yeah, we gotta find someone who hasn't seen Breaking Bad and watch it backwards. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I actually just watched El Camino the other night. It's fucking really good, I thought. Oh, nice. Um, I also had a little bit of uh, Mean of Girls, our Game of Thrones high school spinoff. Oh, yeah. Uh, when Dan Brady is splitting up with her BF before moving to another school. Nah, I'm going to get married to it's somebody like, else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to find a rich man to marry me. <laughs> yeah. So in Mean of Girls, she's going to split with her boyfriend before moving to this new school. So all the guys are like, want me? And that'll be, <laughs> I can make alliances and things. Yeah. <laughs> also, I found out, is her last name Stormborn? <sighs> No, it's Targaryen. I don't know where Stormborn comes from. Oh, okay. All right. I miss her. No, I'm pretty sure they have thrown, maybe, ah, uh, maybe they've thrown Stormborn. She has so many names, it's hard to keep track. Fair enough. Queen of Dragons, Daenerys, Dan Break Brady. Of Chains, <laughs> blah, 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 Queen of Marine. Blah. Oh, I forgot to check out her braids this episode. Oh, yeah. well. But uh, another thing I only kind of clued into after watching the end of season eight and then thinking about it a week later. So she leaves Davio Naharis in charge of Marine. And uh, when she goes to Westeros, and he's crazy in love with her, and then John murders him, and Dario Naharis is sorry, John murders her, and Dario Naharis does nothing. Oh, <laughs> he's got a whole continent pissed off him as well. <laughs> oh my God, he's like Huel in Breaking Bad. He's just sitting in that hotel room, just waiting yeah. for someone to return for him. Oh my him. gosh, it's Game of Thrones, Huel. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, they don't have any internet. He doesn't know what happened. Yeah, <laughs> uh, unless yeah, the last remaining dragon comes back, but then you know. Dragon's a hard language to translate. It is. Roar. Does anyone know what roar means? Roar. Um, what? Roar. Timmy's in the well. Roar. <laughs> dragon tries to draw a picture with the fire, <laughs> but ends up, you know, incinerating a bunch of people. Wow. Pictionary with dragons. It's a, it's a rough game. <laughs> Piction of Nary. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll take it. Yeah. I actually, yeah, liked Peter Dinklage uh, in the post of this moment as well, you know. Oh, sorry, I'm terrible at consoling. And Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's because he owns a PC. (laughs) Got one in there. Ah, You're excused. (laughs) Um, Man, I was going to go over my other notes. There was no cock talk this episode. No cock talk. I'm a little... As much as I shouldn't enjoy people talking about their wangs as a heterosexual male, I, I miss cock talk. It was a fun segment. <laughs> they just came up with so many creative metaphors for the I dick. I know. And they just, yeah, they in, it put it into so many different places, mm. and uh, we just got nothing. I'm, I'm let down. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, again, as my mind wanders with these uh, uh, episodes, you know, I'm just sort of reimagining scenes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jon Snow decides not to kill Millhouse, and he totally has that moment of, like, the Lion King, run away, run away, and never return. And then I got really excited in my notes. Like, oh, and he's got a scar over his <gasps> eye and everything. <laughs> but then I, I like that uh, Sir Davos backs up. He's like, if you come back, I'll kill you myself. And I just wanted him to be like, oh, yeah, I know. If I come back, people will kill me. <laughs> God, I've got it. 
I heard it the first time. <laughs> oh, who's going to kill me first? <laughs> Peace out, fuckers. <laughs> Millhouse, out. Where is some of that sass when you need it? <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I just keep coming back to movies, you know, because Arya Stark as well, she totally had, like, a Diego Montoya, you know, mm-hmm. you killed the last of the Starks, prepare to die or something. Pretty much. And the White Raven is their groundhog. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, man, a whole shit ton of winter. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, but, man, I think that puts me out of notes. How about you? Yeah, oh, my other note was I liked in the moment where in the town hall meeting everyone's rousing for Jon Snow, mm-hmm. how the uh, Game of Thrones theme song like creeped back in, but it was sort of a bit slower and a bit more rousing. Like mm-hmm. I don't think I actually say enough about the sound design on this show. It is very good. Yeah, because um, there was an episode of this podcast, Strong Songs, which yeah, I absolutely adore where he briefly talked about one uh, one of the themes in Game of Thrones. A listener had sort of wrote in, what makes this so creepy? And he goes, honestly, I think it's the use of minimalism in Mm. it and how it's sort of always built around one idea that just gradually adds more and more layers. And, you know, it can dictate the mood like that. And he often uses the same motifs, but he uses them in different ways to tell different moods. And, yeah, Mm. uh, in this one it was, yeah, a very rousing triumphant mood well i think on the other end of that you, the string section uh, for when her- cersei is being coronated is also the string section for when the set blows up ah right chugga, 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 chugga. i can't do it properly but... <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a, a violin <laughs> you're not an entire orchestra no, no. <laughs> but uh it's um yeah it's it's tense and it lets you it ties those two things together whether or not you realize it i think sound design is one of those things that when it's great you don't even notice but when yeah. it's terrible it really sticks out yeah yeah um, like the editing of this show, my goodness. No, you only ever talk about it when what the fuck was that cut and, you know, yeah, Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody did and everything. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so what is the power structure as well? So Cersei's son was the king who died, yep. and because he was the last remaining relative, even though she was previously on trial for other crimes, she gets to be queen. Everyone who is trying her for crimes is dead, so... Right. All right, um... And I'm just trying to think how much of this... Some of it will make sense in retrospect, but in terms of structure, yeah. Uh, the king is dead. There are no other living uh, male heirs to take the throne. Even though that was her son, power then reverts to her. As, you know, other than Jamie Lannister, the only uh, living... But no one knows that this is his son as well. No one knows that, but that's fine. It wouldn't matter. He's uh, He rescinded his right to claim to the throne when he became a king's guard. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, even that, and that has historical precedent as well. Um, things would often fall to a matriarch when all the patriarchs were dead. Ah, there you yes. go. So, yeah, uh, she takes compa- control and gets all black and metal clothing on, and that's her dress from that one. Hmm. I actually noticed this is like, yeah, her one repeat dress uh, throughout the show. I've noticed it, yeah, these people have too many clothes. Mm. Like, there's no way that the people of this time had more than maybe three outfits. The rich ones did, so... Yeah, I suppose, but still. And again, the costume designers on the show work their ass off, so yeah. <laughs> it's impressive stuff. Absolutely. All right, well, that puts me out of notes as well, so it brings us to our last question. How did we get here? Oh, okay, so Cersei's on trial for something. Fuck, okay. Um, she's just got so many unpaid parking tickets. <laughs> like, she's just put her horse and cart where it doesn't belong, mm-hmm. and it's just gotten to the point where she's brought the city to a standstill, and... They're sick of it. <laughs> oh, but also this other guy's on trial as well, so mm-hmm. uh, that was her driver. <laughs> All right, yeah. Hey, we'll find out as we travel further through Game of Thrones back in time. But for now, our watch has ended. Welcome to season three, y'all. Woohoo! So, into season six.